You're listening to Behind the Wheels with Doug Mason, Dave Walters, and Mike Yeagley. This is a show where we talk about heavy truck and medium-duty axolands. Doug, Dave, and Mike bring close to 100 years of experience and expertise in the transportation business. Join us once a month to learn new things about axolands. Sponsored by Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheels. I'm Mike Yeagley. I'm Doug Mason. And I'm Dave Walters. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about medium-duty trucks uh, and medium-duty applications and the axle and specifically the wheels on those medium-duty applications. Now, medium-duty means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I was looking online, just uh, looking at some of the different definitions of medium-duty, and uh, honestly, they are all over the map. When I'm referencing these websites, I'm not talking about just some mom and pop website. These are either OEMs or other folks who are very, very knowledgeable about the the trucking industry. And there is often not a, there is not a clear definition. Some people will say uh, class seven is medium duty. Some people will say it's maxes out of class six. There's all these different definitions of what medium duty is. And I think, you know, for today's discussion on medium duty, I, I think we, we're going to just have to start by defining what medium duty is for the sake of this discussion. So I'm going to open it up here to uh, Dave and Doug, and uh, let's sort of hash that out to start this thing out. I'll throw this out. At TMC, we've always defined medium duty as non-CDL drivers. So that would be class three through six where seven and eights need CDLs. And when you get a CDL, then you're regulated by the CSA, you know, scores and that kind of stuff. So they always said medium duties are non-CDL drivers, class three through six. So I'll throw that one out first. Yeah, I think that, you know, when I think of medium duty, uh, I think of the actual different areas where you you look at the the truck and you go, oh, that's not a, that's not a semi. It's got to be a medium duty truck. And some of the the markets that that runs into is, you know, you've got uh, the RV market. People don't realize, but really those are those are medium duty trucks, a large portion of them. You have the growing last mile market, if you want to call it that, where you have all of these box trucks, uh, like the old bread trucks. Uh, I think about the old workhorse vehicles, you know, being medium duty. Uh, tow trucks, those are, those are medium duty. Other work truck type th- uh, vehicles that are not, um, you know, class eight, but they're, they're work trucks. You can think of the, you know, the Ford and GM and, and Chevy and all those larger pickup trucks with dualies on them. Uh, those are medium duty trucks. And so that's kind of what rolls through my mind. And for all of those various applications, oh, we have so much variety in the wheels that they take as opposed to the the class eight or the, the heavy duty mark, which really runs 22 and a half primarily um, 90% of the wheels where it's very different in the medium duty market, right, Mike? Well, absolutely, Doug. You know, I'm used to seeing uh, those heavy duty that, like Dave said, he said the the CDL guys, those professional drivers, they're typically driving in the big rig. You're seeing those 22 and a half inch wheels. All of them run on the 10 bolt holes on 285.75 millimeter bolt circles. You know, if you take all the bolt holes and you, you do a connect the dots from one to the other, the diameter of that circle is going to be 285.75 millimeters. That is heavy duty. And medium duty is pretty much everything else until you get to the passenger world. And I, I really liked the TMC definition of that, that breakdown of CDL professional drivers and we'll call it non-professional drivers. That, that really cleans up a lot of confusion, at least I think it does. Now that we've sort of defined the domain, the area we're going to be talking about, you know, the kind of trucks we're talking about, you know, Doug, you mentioned the the RV market. I think you mentioned tow trucks. You've got garbage trucks are in in medium duty, I think. There's so much variation in that medium duty market. Either one of you guys want to comment on the size of the medium duty market versus the heavy duty market? I know for a fact the medium duty market is much larger than the heavy duty market. But when we talk at TMC about that market, and again, I'll just throw this out for debate amongst us, but it's very more OEM driven. 
the OEMs have a lot more control in a lot of this with the wheel sizes and uh, different varieties and different stuff. So every fleet would love to have one wheel fit all vehicles. You don't see that normally when you get into medium duty. That was my life for a number of years. Uh, I won't talk about the OEMs, but there's one OEM who has a large, large portion of what we would call the medium duty market, class three through class six. And uh, obviously they run all their own bolt circles, wheel sizes. They have all their own test parameters. And the other OEMs uh, don't necessarily follow along with that as you get into these uh, smaller vehicles. The fact that it's so splintered, I would say, in terms of the different sizes, applications, and uh, you're right, a fleet would love to just say, hey, we have the same bolt-up parameters on all of our wheels, and away we go. That's that's not the case for this. And we have wheels that run from 16-inch by 5.5 wide to, you know, 19.5 by 7.5. Uh, so and maybe some even lower, eight and a quarter, I think, uh, widths we have on some 19 and a half. So the load range, again, huge. Uh, so there's so much variation that there really isn't the ability to have the same standardization as you would have in the, the heavy duty segment. So that's a good point, Dave. One of the things I did spend a little bit of time in the medium duty segment and what struck me was even the OEMs are beholden a little bit to the big bodybuilders. I was working closely at that time with one of the OEMs, uh, one of the big OEMs in the, in the medium duty space. And he took me along to go visit some of the big bodybuilders. And, and all he wanted was he wanted to make sure they didn't go to the competitor OEM. And the bodybuilders were sort of looking at these these chassis that he was trying to push. They were looking at them really as a module. When it came to the axle end, they weren't really interested in the axle end so much. They were really more interested, you know, in the features. You know, what kind of what kind of alternator do you have? How many points can I connect here? How many, you know, it's like they were looking at ways that that chassis would service their bodybuilding what they wanted to do with the chassis. Uh, when it went to, you know, below the chassis, when you start getting into things like the the axle end, that was a low priority for them. And, you know, that's sort of what you we're seeing here is you don't have that standardization. Like I said, when, in my experience working with those bodybuilders for a couple of years was that that was an afterthought. And, and it sort of shows up in the maintenance organizations where you just have all sorts of bolt circles, all sorts of wheel sizes. It's just all over the map what the maintenance organizations have to be working with. I got just one other comment to throw in here, Mike. You just made me think of this. Um, again, all of the, the variation uh, with all the different suppliers in the medium duty or work truck segment. It made me think of the NTEA, the National Truck Equipment Association, which really is the work truck association. And the majority of what they you know, do a deal with would be the medium duty segment. And like you said, all of the bodybuilders, all the uh, equipment that can be put on these vehicles are all built by different suppliers and added at different points. And so it's a very it's a very unique uh, industry. Like you said, Dave, other very different than the commercial uh, truck uh, class eight segment where you go to an OEM, you tell them what you want. They build a truck to what you want and the way it comes. There's not as much add on afterwards, whereas in the case of the medium duty market, a chassis gets made by the OEM and gets modified in so many different ways for all the different applications that are used that we kind of walked through already that handle the medium duty segment. So it does make sense. It comes on wheels and whatever yeah. it, comes yeah, on, it comes on, they take it. That's right. We had a show already on steel versus aluminum in the heavy duty segment. And in the medium duty segment, that steel versus aluminum discussion changes dramatically. When we're talking about the, the benefits of steel and the benefits of aluminum in that medium duty segment, like my experience working with the bodybuilders briefly, Doug, what you just said, those medium duty guys typically are going to look at the, at the wheels and they're going to say, well, are they round? Okay, let's go. And they're looking for different features. There's a lot of benefits to steel. You've got low cost. There's a lot of things that for that segment, there's a lot of things that steel has to offer. One of the things is, you know, aluminum does play in, you know, we do play in that space. Uh, aluminum wheels play in that space. And so those customers 
who are looking at aluminum, what are the things that they're telling us are the real benefits of aluminum that they're seeing in the medium duty uh, applications? Dave? I'll bring up, uh, in my years of going out with a lot of salespeople and joint calls with different types of fleets, when we went into medium duty fleets, the success stories that I can tell was a private fleet was very image driven. And we used to give them a set of wheels to basically put on a vehicle. And when the owner would see how good that vehicle would look, he wanted his company's name to have that image. So we did very well in in the private fleet with image conscience people because they wanted that, that look to be so professional when that vehicle was delivering the product that these people made going out to customers. So image was definitely a big factor in my experience. Yeah, Dave, one other thing that uh, we ran into, I was, again, working in the medium duty segment more heavily, you know, a few years back and working with the, the sales guys as well. And where, where we saw a drive was fleets that were in areas where corrosion would take place and where they would keep their vehicles. A lot of medium duty uh, fleets t- keep their vehicles significantly longer than a, a typical heavy duty fleet. And we would find people 10, 15 plus years uh, that they would hang on to these uh, trucks before they would replace them. And in that case, uh, there was a lot of refurbishment that had to take place on, on steel wheels uh, over time. And if you keep that vehicle 10, 15 years, that cycle increases two, three, four times. And then there becomes the, the payback where you get the look like you were talking about, which they liked, but there was also a, a bigger financial benefit. We saw that as another driving force. Uh, and, and you would see that even outside of the, uh, out of some of these fleets, like in the RV market, you'll find in the RV market, a, a pretty heavy dose of aluminum wheels. Reason for that, maintenance. Guys who are driving big RVs, they don't want to mess with the wheels. They don't want to mess around with them at all. Whether it's the small RVs, um, I won't say any specific names, but there's some uh, European RV manufacturers, vehicle manufacturers that's pretty heavy in the market here, and they are pretty much all uh, aluminum wheels. And then the heavy heavier ones, which almost get into the class eight size, they're running 22 and a half, but they're big old RVs. And again, it's uh, from a maintenance perspective, but I, I would agree with you that the two main driving forces are appearance. And if there's a, a push for the, the payback, it's really where there's uh, you know heavy corrosion maintenance uh, concerns that would drive you to an, an aluminum wheel. You know, one of the things we talked about here, you, you just mentioned was the image, the importance of image. And you see a lot of these uh, tow trucks driving around with simulators. And as you look around in the medium duty space, uh, there are an awful lot of simulators out there. Uh, just to try and give that aluminum wheel you know, or, or chrome wheel, I don't know exactly. I'm assuming they're going after an aluminum wheel look to try and get the look without having to go aluminum. I'm, I'm assuming it's mostly because they probably don't know aluminum's available. Dave, do you have any comments on simulators? Yes, I do. I, I have not been a fan of simulators in any industry. And years ago, we actually went into the quite a few fire truck shows, which fire trucks at that time was pretty prevalent on simulators. And what we really found out was simulators cover up maintenance issues. If you have a broken stud or a loose cap nut, or if you have a cracked wheel or a leaking wheel seal, that all covers up those issues. And, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is rush into a fire and have a maintenance issue. But what we found is that's really true in every industry. And just to kind of give you an idea of, of how important it is, CVSA will not give you a sticker if you have wheel covers on or they need to look at those issues. So, I mean, simulators basically cover up issues. And the other thing in the fire truck industry, these guys, when they're rushing to a fire, as as most of the fire chiefs explained to us at this convention, that these guys have both feet on the ground, one on the gas pedal and one on the brake. And a lot of heat builds up and simulators definitely hold in heat compared to dissipating heat like aluminum wheels do. So I've never been a fan of simulators and you can buy an aluminum wheel to get the appearance. 
and uh, have a lot more benefits. Doug, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I mean, very similar, you know, situations that we've seen. And, and you'll find, again, in, in a simulator looks nice and it's called a simulator because it's trying to simulate the look of something. And again, I would say either a, a chrome plated wheel or an aluminum wheel, which we'd be biased towards, obviously. But yeah, we saw the same thing in the uh, in the market for transport vehicles. Uh, you think of the vehicles uh, at the airport, right, uh, that run people back and forward. And that's a pretty heavy market for, for simulators. And we saw the same type of situation in some of the, I guess, the northeast areas specifically. Again, going to the, the corrosion and the maintenance that needs to be seen to be taken care of is one of the main concerns there. So that's that's all I would have to say to add to what Dave has there. So one of the things that uh, you also see in the medium duty space is where the stud standout is not really sufficient to they, they when, when they design the, the axle end, a lot of the OEMs will assume they're going to go with with steel. And so the stud standout, which the stud standout is the distance that the stud stands out from the hub. And so a lot of the time you're stuck you know, with either steel, you can go duels. If you, if you have to duel up, you're going with steel because there's not enough stud there to really affix the, to really, you know, hold on the, the two aluminums in a lot of these applications. Or if a lot of people are doing the steel on the inner and a, a, an aluminum on the outer, if they want to get the look, but they, then they, they still have that problem of, you know, you have a steel inner and that that has its own issues. Doug, you got any any thoughts? I know you did a lot of work in the medium duty space trying to work through those issues. Do you have any comments? Yeah, I mean, where it came from again is, you know, a lot of these vehicles have had the same hub configurations for decades. And so the tooling's all in place. No one's going to change anything really moving forward because of the cost to do so. And these these assets have basically been, you know, run through, so they're making money on them, which is what, the, what they should be doing. But what we found is it, it, it is stud standout in some instances, but the bigger issue that we would run into would be the, uh, the pilot tabs. Um, when you're looking at a hub piloted wheel, you wanna make sure that you have enough uh, engagement of that pilot for the inner and the outer dual both. And so, that's where a lot of the issue came in. And as there's been advancements in aluminum wheel manufacturing, as well as alloys, uh, they have changed alloys here in the field, the thickness of the hub has dramatically decreased. And to the point, you know, just as an example, it still makes me uh, surprised, but we have one RV that we build a specific uh, wheel for that is less than 10 millimeters thick in the hub. Uh, that's that's pretty thin and that allows for a dual setup and there's a large segment of that rv market that wants aluminum wheels all the way around and, and that meets the the desire of that particular market so that's what what has to happen is improvements in the material and the processing to actually conform to the hub that isn't going to change it's going to stay the same so that's what we found that we had to work through um, when we found customers who wanted aluminum wheels, but because of the uh, the OEs were not willing to change either stud length or pilot uh, tab length, the wheel had to accommodate. So it's actually driven improvements in wheel technology, even in the medium duty segment that we can carry on to the heavy duty segment. Very good. I think that about covers uh, steel and aluminum. The applications for medium duty, I think that we've covered a lot of things here. You know, first of all, is that the CDL uh, is, at least for this discussion, we're, we're sticking with the TMC definition, that uh, CDL, those professional drivers, that's going to be heavy duty. And medium duty is going to be those non-CDL guys. Typically, that work truck space, that medium duty space, is mostly going to be interested in cost. It's a very cost uh, sensitive business. And so we see an awful lot of steel wheels that's, that speaks the language of that business. But there are the folks out there who are looking for image or maybe they're where, where aluminum really makes sense for them. Once they see the aluminum on their, on their vehicles, then that, that's like, wow, yeah, that's what I want to say about myself. 
Uh, and then there's also the, the refurbishment uh, benefit of aluminum that you'll see out there, especially in those areas in the Northeast where you're going to have a lot of corrosion. We talked a little bit about simulators and the problems with simulators. And the, probably the biggest issue that I think Dave brought up was the safety issue. Like Dave mentioned, you can't get the sticker from CVSA uh, if, you, if you have a simulator on there because you don't know if your wheel has a crack in it. And then finally, we talked a little bit about the, the technology. The way medium duty is one of the areas that has pushed at least Alcoa wheels. And I think it's pushing the whole aluminum industry. The only way that you can get the technology to thin that rim enough where you can go six on. When I say six on, that means you have the, the duels in the rear, the steer, the singles, of course, in the steer. So that's six wheels for two axles. That technology has allowed uh, aluminum to, to thin the, that mounting flange enough where you can put those duels on, and that really is what those customers are looking for. I think that about does it. Thank you guys for joining us, and thank you everybody for joining us for this discussion on medium duty. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can catch us at alcoholwheels.com. Just click on the podcast tab and you can send us a note. We'd love to hear from you. We're very interested in any questions or comments you might have. I guess that does it. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Sponsored by Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation, manufacturing, and technology. Inventing the first forged aluminum wheel in 1948, its team of experts continue to develop the most lightweight, efficient, and high-performing commercial vehicle aluminum wheel products. Bringing you revolutionary innovations like Alcoa Durabrite wheels, Alcoa Dura Black Wheels, the new Alcoa Wheels Hubboard technology, and the lightest truck wheel on the market, Alcoa Ultra One 22 and a half by eight and a quarter wheel. Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation.